I've got my ghost sweater on and we are going to build a haunted house. I don't really do a lot of like creepy builds in The Sims. I spend most of my time building like little adorable suburban family houses. So this like haunted mansion in the vampire world is a little bit out of my comfort zone. But with Halloween, I was feeling a little bit more in the mood to make something a bit more haunted this time. So the goal for today is to build a haunted mansion, like a big old house that's been abandoned. The long dead previous owners are haunting this place as ghosts. It's full of spider webs and like stained floors and a lot of mess going on because it's been abandoned and just sort of left to rot over the years. I was kind of trying to find the line between like overgrown, super cluttered mess, but also still technically functional house because I wanted to put a bunch of like overgrown plants and rocks everywhere. And I wanted to fill the house with like messy clutter everywhere. But I also wanted your Sims to still be able to like walk around it so that if you wanted to live here, you still could. So I like rotated the beds so they're not like perfectly against the wall anymore because the place maybe got like messed with by somebody. Maybe they were like digging around to try and steal something. So they pulled the bed off the wall, but the bed is still functional. Like it's not completely off the wall or blocked off. You can still get into it. Does that make sense? I was like really trying to walk the line between messy, but still works. And I do think that I managed to pull it off. I had a lot of fun landscaping this build. I tried to put like a really grand front entrance. There's like a couple really grand gates. It's covered in like dead rose bushes and like overgrown vines and stuff. I even put a dead cow plant in the front yard. It just felt appropriate for a place like this. You know, I didn't really spend a lot of time thinking about what happened to the owners of this house to like cause them to be dead and haunting it. Like maybe the owners got eaten by that cow plant and then once the owners were dead, the cow plant had no more food so the cow plant died too. And the owners have been here ever since, haunting the halls and scaring away anybody who dares walk past. Okay, I like that idea. That's a good one. Whenever I make these haunted bills, like last time I tried to say the owners got swept away in a tornado. What is that about? What is that? A cow plant is a way, way easier choice. It makes sense. It fits the build. It's like Sims appropriate. I don't know what I was thinking last time, but this time I think it works. In general, I think that this house is probably one of the better haunted builds that I've done. You've probably noticed this about me, but I'm not really good at this sort of thing. I think a lot of times when I try and do this sort of build, I get sort of like stuck on a color scheme or like an idea. And so with this house, I've used like all the black brick and all of that black trim. And then I was like, like, okay, I'll use black windows, but then the whole house was gonna be like all black everywhere. And sometimes that's maybe a little bit much, like it looks a bit too monochrome and I always fall into that trap. So I tried to use white windows instead. The white windows still have like a black trim on them, like on the inside. So I feel like it still matches. And just because the house is old and like scary doesn't mean the whole thing has to be all black everywhere. It can be painted white, but just maybe have faded or, or gotten stained over the years. And those vampires windows are great for that because there's like some cracked swatches and stuff. And I even went in and like added some extra cracks to it, like using the vampire's little wall decals. I tried to put a lot of detail into the exterior on this one. You'll see that I put like all of those little roof pieces on the top and oh my God, don't even get me started on those. They didn't fit like exactly right. So I had to like alt place them and scoot them and overlap them a little bit on the sides. So you can kind of tell that on the left and right, they don't fit exactly. They aren't like perfectly spaced evenly. They're a little bit closer together towards the ends. Just don't look that closely at it, okay? No no one needs to stare at like the little roof decorations on the left side of the building ignore it. But that was really bugging me. When I was trying to place them, I was getting really frustrated. And then the other sort of weird thing is that those roof pieces, every time I put them on the roof, they do this. The same thing happens with the Strangerville ones. I think it sort of glitches when it's around the roof. So like most of the sides are fine, but the little pieces that are sort of nearby to the tower roof kept bugging. They would like glitch out and then go to the floor below somehow, basically. So like they would glitch and then turn completely black. They're obviously already black, but they would like look broken. The lighting would be broken on them so the shadows would be kind of weird and it would be completely black. It would have no texture, it would literally be completely black. And oh my god, the other annoying thing that I was experiencing with this build has to do with the columns on the front of the tower. So those vampire columns can't be raised up like all the way. A lot of the columns you can just raise up indefinitely, like for example the get together one that's just like a plain little square. You can raise that up to like pretty much any height, but some columns like stop 
stop at a certain point. They stop being height adjustable. I think it has to do with the decorations on them. The vampires columns are some of those. Like you can't raise them up indefinitely. So I raised them up to the absolute max height that they could be. And they're just like this much too short to put on the front of the building. They go all the way up to like this far below the freeze. So you can't really tell when you're looking from far away. Like if you were just to stare at the house right now, you totally can't even see it. Like you would have no idea if I didn't tell you. But of course I know because I saw it when I was trying to build it and it was making me so angry. I ended up trying to put like little gargoyles on the sides to like try and make it seem intentional, like just to like add some decor to it. But the gargoyles are really little. I like size them all the way down as small as they can be. So you can't really see those either, but at least I know they're there and it makes me feel a bit better about it. I kind of had a hard time with the landscaping too because I wasn't super sure what I was going for. Like initially I was kind of going for like pristine, more mansion-y type landscaping. And then I was like, Kayla, what are you doing? It's an abandoned haunted house. Like they're not gonna have a gardener coming by. So then I kind of switched gears and I used a lot more of the vampires landscaping and I tried to put a lot of plants everywhere, sort of to give the vibe that maybe this house used to be very elaborately landscaped, very manicured, but now no one's been here to take care of it in a long time. All the plants are dead. Everything is kind of overgrown. So there's a ton of like thorny rose bushes, like some random weed looking flowers, some random like weeds maybe growing, a lot of vines. I even put a few little flowers just because they kind of fit the vibe. I put a lot of rocks and stuff obviously, and I feel like it ended up looking really good. It took me a while to get through all of it and like figure out where to place it all. And also to get over like the way, it took me a little while to place it all because there's so much of it, but it really starts to come together as I start putting it all in. And then I start putting the terrain paint in and it really, really works out well. There's some really nice like vine items that came with the vampire pack as well that I sort of layered on top of the pathway. And I feel like that sort of helped too, because in real life that pathway would be kind of cracked. Of course the vines would be overgrowing onto it. I even put like some fallen trees and like some random pieces of wood that it's sort of been knocked over out there. There's like a little cow plant skull collectible that came with the werewolf pack. I think I hid that somewhere. I don't know if it's actually a cow plant skull in our little story, but it's definitely a skull. It's it's something skull. There isn't really much of a backyard on this house because obviously I made this really grand front entrance. So the back I just kind of mimicked this landscaping, but there isn't like anything going on back there or like a patio or anything like that. I guess this house is in the vampire's world. So they're probably not like big outdoorsy people, but I don't think that the owners of this house were vampires. Like I didn't build this house for a vampire. It just so happens they live in the scary vampire world. They do, however, have like a little bit more of a side yard on the left. The house is mostly symmetrical, but they have like a sunroom music room thing on the right side. And there isn't like an extra room on the left to mimic it. I did that on purpose just to kind of like throw off the balance because it was too symmetrical. But because of that, we have a bit more yard space on the left side. And so I put a bit of a family graveyard there. I was kind of channeling my like inner Sims 3 goth family house. I'm sure some of you are pretty familiar with that house back from the olden days, the original goth house. They had like a proper family graveyard on their lot. This one is just like three graves kind of chilling there, but I was sort of trying to call back to that. I was kind of inspired by it. So I put a graveyard here on our lot too. The interior I feel like came together really nicely too. Like the floor plan just sort of worked out really well. So you walk into like a really big stairway, hallway, main front entrance. To the left, we're gonna have a really big living room, like a nice formal sitting room sort of thing. And then to the right is the formal dining room. And then off of that, I put like a doorway into the kitchen and a doorway into that library that I was mentioning. It's not exactly a big like open floor plan. And the kitchen is kind of like closed off towards the back, like how it is in a lot of older homes. There is one bathroom downstairs that I managed to fit into like a little hallway in the back of the house. And then there's a couple more bathrooms upstairs. I think there's three bedrooms upstairs. I'm pretty sure we have like the primary bedroom, like maybe another guest room and a baby's room. And then we also have an attic. And I just tried to fill the attic with like a lot of random old stuff, like just a lot of like scary old things up in the attic. I feel like the floor plan of the upstairs was a little bit harder because the stairs were so big and like kind of right in the middle. There wasn't as much space around the stairs as I would have liked to get like decent sized bedrooms. Cause I feel like a house like this would probably have pretty nice like big bedrooms. It's like an ancient mansion, right? They'd probably have some really nice bedrooms. Now, unfortunately, the attic was a bit of an afterthought. Like I didn't put a staircase to the attic upstairs. I didn't really think about it. And truly, I'm glad that I didn't because I don't really know where I would have put it. The attic isn't that big, so I'm not sure where the staircase would have fit in, but I did put a ladder into the attic. In one of the bedrooms, I hid like a ladder upstairs behind a bookcase door. So it's kind of like a secretive attic, but it is actually accessible. So your Sims can totally get up there. Again, that brings in 
in that like trying to keep it functional but also making it look really cool and scary and I feel like the bookcase door is, is a very good combination of both of those things. That bump out sort of separated it into an office nook and like a bedroom nook which makes like two separate zones and I feel like that makes sense. It is kind of random to have like a little random bookcase door bump out in the room but it works, it works and I think once it's furnished it all kind of comes together. Now I will warn you I used a lot of packs in this build. I was more worried about scary and less worried about pack limitations so we've got all kinds of random stuff. That floor is from the werewolf pack, we've, we've got counters from Realm of Magic, there's like a kit stove right there, there's a bunch of random stains from Strangerville, like I there's all kinds of packs going on in here. But again the kitchen is totally functional, it has a sink, it has a stove, it has a fridge and I like pulled the stove out and kind of rotated it. Maybe because in real life the stove was broken and somebody was trying to like get back to like the gas connection or something, I don't know, to fix it and they just didn't push it up against the wall again. But the stove still functions, your sims can use it when it's rotated like that, it isn't blocked off or anything, it just looks kind of weird. But again I feel like it makes sense. I'm sort of picturing that over the years as this house has been abandoned people have like broken in and tried to like spend the night in a haunted house or tried to like go digging looking for like the old owner's lost jewelry, like people have probably come in here trying to steal stuff. So of course the furniture is like a bit askew and <laughs> things are a little bit messy. You know what, I hadn't really thought about that before but that could be a fun like vacation rental idea. If you wanted to actually play in this house you could like set it as a vacation rental and you could have your sims like try and spend the night in a haunted house like for storytelling aspects. You know, when you go on vacation to the vampire world, the uh, really popular tourist destination where there's um, like four lots <laughs> and, and no community lots and nothing to do. Well, there might be a chess table in that like main courtyard in the center of the neighborhood. And there's a graveyard in, in Vlad's backyard, but aside from that there there really isn't much going on in the vampire world. <laughs> it really is amazing to like look back on this because the vampire world, number one, all of its lots are so bad. Like the buildings, like Vlad's house has got to be one of the ugliest builds in the entirety of The Sims 4. At least it's functional and not like completely empty or I don't know, lacking toilets like some other builds we know about. But when you compare the vampire world to like the werewolves pack and the werewolves world, the vampire ones sucks. It really is a good testament to like how much better they've gotten at making packs and like how improved The Sims has been over the past few years. Because the werewolves world is huge, it's like so much bigger, there's so many more lots in it just in general, but also like the environment around it is way bigger, there's like way more places for your sim to just walk that aren't lots. It has that whole like tunnel system thing, there's multiple community lots, we've got like the bar and you also have the library. They had James do the builds so the builds are like way better. The whole, the whole werewolf pack is like like a million times better than vampires. I think the gameplay is pretty similar, like the vampires gameplay isn't worse than werewolves, but just going off the world alone, which is more important to me because I, I mostly just build, like I don't really play with vampires that often, but I do build here a lot. Whenever I'm trying to make a scary house I'm like I'm going to the vampires world. So just just on the worlds alone, like the, the werewolf pack is so much better than vampires. It's like twice the size. It isn't as scary though, like the werewolf world is more like ooh a band and industrial town that people have been like converting buildings into new ones. Like it's kind of, I don't want to say trendy because it's it's still got like a bunch of scratches on the wall and stuff like that, but the world itself isn't necessarily as scary as the vampire one. The vampire one is like literally a graveyard. Like there's graves up in the back, there's a big mansion on a hill that's lived in by this scary vampire. It's a little bit darker over here, the landscaping is a bit more, I don't know, it's just it's scarier in the vampire area. Also so I know I said this house wasn't for vampires, but I did put a giant portrait of Vlad up on the wall in the living room. Look, I don't know, we don't really have a lot of nice like old artwork <laughs> and that giant portrait of Vlad is really good. It's a very large mansion worthy sort of art piece and so just pretend it's not Vlad. Okay? Pretend it's anybody but Vlad. There's actually a little miniature version of that painting that came in the werewolf pack but it's got a scratch through it. There's like a few different swatches of paintings of vampires that have been destroyed from the werewolf pack which is so cool, I love those little details. And so I did put some of those like destroyed paintings around the house. I'm not trying to tell any sort of like vampire hate story or, or anything like that, it just felt appropriate to have like a ripped painting in this building because so much of it is kind of old and destroyed. Now this room right here is like an abandoned nursery, which is a 
little bit sad, okay? I don't really want to uh, play into that idea. Nothing happened to the baby. The baby just grew up, okay? <laughs> the baby grew up and then it got eaten by a cow plant. Nothing happened. The baby's fine. The baby as an adult is not fine. The baby though, it's all good. The, the nursery is only abandoned because the baby grew out of it. That's all. I kind of made that room a little bit more empty on purpose and put like storage boxes in there to sort of imply that the room hadn't been used even by the previous owners. And then the other two bedrooms were a bit more used. Like, I guess maybe the baby went on to live in that room with the, the ladder and the bookcase door. <laughs> I'm not making this better. I'm like, it's fine. The baby, the baby lived at least like 20 more years until it got eaten by a giant man-eating plant. All is well. No harm here. It's a lovely, happy story. Also, you can probably tell by like how many I've placed, but I really had fun with the spider webs in this build. I put spider webs everywhere. There's a whole bunch of spider webs from the vampire pack. There's like four different variants that like fit on different corners or like different heights, basically. One kind of leans against the wall, one like goes from the ceiling. So I was putting spider webs everywhere. And I warn you, in game, I didn't even know this until kind of recently because I don't really play in houses like this. I just build them. So I only ever see in build mode, but when you unpause the game, like in live mode, spiders appear on those. So I'm warning you right now, there are spiders that will show up like gameplay and like move around a bit on those spider webs. Nothing will happen to your sim. They aren't like dangerous. It's just visual effects. But I found that very shocking when I first saw spiders appear on those spider webs. So I'm warning you right now, if you don't like spiders, maybe delete those. Or maybe just don't download this house actually, because they're everywhere. <laughs> just avoid this one. I also put a bunch of the cracks in the wall. It's pretty fun because because vampires has wall cracks and then werewolves came with floor cracks. So there's a bunch of swatches of like random cracks that you can use, which are really good for this sort of build. If you're into building like rags to riches type things, or just like older, more abandoned type houses, even ones that aren't haunted, just maybe like abandoned houses or old houses, those packs are both really good for that kind of thing because they have so many like different kinds of cracks and like wall patches too. Like vampires has like four different kinds of messed up walls. There's like a water damage looking one and there's one it looks like the plaster has been peeled off. There's just a whole bunch of different options. So if you like that kind of thing, good packs for building, both of those. I will say, I think that vampires is probably a bit better for building than werewolves. Like it just has more stuff. It even has a kitchen set and things, but you can't really beat the werewolf world, so. I'd probably pick that one over it. And that, my friends, is the entire haunted house. I'm actually really proud of this build. I'm really happy with how the inside turned out, but especially how the like front landscaping looks. It's pretty fun to build things that I don't usually do. It's really different than my average everyday Sims build. So let's pop into the game and I'll show you a proper tour. I built this one on this lot in Forgotten Hollow, so I'm gonna have to remove these two vampires. It's called Haunted House on the gallery if you're looking for it. I know, very creative name. And this is what the finish product turned out like. So you can see on the front yard, I have like filled this with clutter and landscaping. I even put like some broken boards right here and I found these really cool archways in debug. This is a little bit annoying because you can totally tell that it like doesn't fit there. <laughs> like I just raised it up and put it there, but from far away you can't tell. So ignore that. This part, it's intentional, okay? If you just tell people that you did it on purpose, they'll they'll believe you, right? So this part, I, I like how it looks with the overlapping and it fits perfectly as far as I'm concerned. I even have like a broken down tree over here. There's the dead cow plant that killed the whole family. Uh, over back here on this left side, we have like the graves of the Sims that used to live here. I even tried to put like some of those little destroyed pieces on the brick. You can see there's like some cracks in a few of the windows that I placed. The back of the house isn't anything special. I just put like a bunch more landscaping back here as well. I'm noticing that I didn't put anything on this patio. I don't think that was intentional. Um, I think I just kind of forgot, but you know, it's, it, somebody stole it. It's outside. If there was furniture out here, it would be gone. That's, that's what happened. It was, it was stolen. Yeah, sure. And then when you actually go inside, you walk up this little porch into a really, really messy entryway. <gasps> they deleted my furniture! Sure. Wait a minute, I had a table right there. I'm gonna place this again, hang on. Somebody stole my table. Is it fixed? My table is still gone. Did I delete it by accident before I uploaded it? You can tell it was there because the lamp is floating. You know what, maybe that's like part of the haunting. There's a floating lamp. I'm pretty sure I had like this table right here. And I, you know what? I had a painting there too. I am certain that I had like one of those destroyed paintings right there. That's so weird. Okay, well, haunted house, haunted paintings. We have this like sort of messy entryway. I tried to put like some weird staining on the floor. There's like a crack in the hardwood right here. I was imagining like a bunch of old mail came through this mail slot and landed on the floor right here. And then to the left, we have the main living space. In here, I tried to like move around some of the furniture, like these chairs 
hairs are obviously not placed perfectly. This organ like totally does not fit right there, but I like snuck it in the corner and angled it like somebody moved it. We even have like a knight statue and stuff. Back here there's like a little tiny hallway and then a bathroom downstairs. Again, full of cracks and like nasty stains and stuff. This floor is perfect because by default it just is cracked. Like it just looks like that, which is so good for our purposes. <laughs> and then I added some more to it. And then off to the right from the entry we have like a sort of formal dining room, which I think is perfect. This is a really realistic floor plan, I think. And then there's a little door into a kitchen, again, super messy, kind of gross, but still functional. I like how the tile looks in here a lot. This is that tile that came with the high school years pack, and I think that tile combined with this counter looks really good. And then off to the right even more, we have like a sunroom, library, music room thing. I always get comments about how the piano should be like this, but just imagine that it, it got rotated like the rest of the furniture if it bugs you. <laughs> it's just easier for your sims to access like this, so I always put it like that instead. Obviously in real life if you had a grand and piano, it would be different, but this is The Sims, so <laughs> I did it like that. And then upstairs, we've got like a really dirty old hallway. I didn't put a lot of lights in here, just like a few wall lights and a lamp and stuff. And you can kind of see there's like a bunch of storage and things, but I really like how the hallway turned out. We have one small bathroom that's for the hall. And then off to this side, we have that bedroom that I was talking about, how it has that kind of office space here, that ladder in the bookcase door. And then over here on this side, like the bedroom, I kind of like how it's split off into those two zones. And then it has a shared door in this bathroom, kind of like a Jack and Jill bathroom, shared with like the main primary bedroom over here. It's all purple, it's got some fun swatches, and then we have that little tiny kids room that I was talking about. I even left a couple of toys right there, but like imagine they just packed up all the baby stuff into these crates because baby grew up. That's all. That's all. And then upstairs in the attic, we have a bunch of storage. Like what I was picturing being more of the baby stuff, like more of the kids stuff. Even some old paintings, there's some old books. For some reason, they have a second grand piano up here. I'm imagining some new owner is like blissfully unaware of all of the haunts that happen in this house. Maybe they don't even know there's an attic up there because they, they've been tricked by the bookcase door and they just hear like a ghost playing the piano coming from like the ceiling. It's kind of scary. There's even a coffin, which is also kind of scary. I put like some art stuff over here and also a seance table. So there's a few like functional useful items if you wanted to play in this house. And that is the entire building. I'm really happy with it. I think it was super fun to build. Happy Halloween, my friends. If you don't have any Halloween plans, because trust me, I don't either, I'm gonna be streaming on Halloween. I'll be live on my Twitch channel like all night playing The Sims. I think I'll do some ghost hunting. Maybe I'll build another haunted house or something. I will also be in costume. So if you wanna hang out on Monday, please feel free to drop by. I'll have my Twitch channel linked down below. But thank you all so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Have the best rest of your day and have a great weekend. And I will catch you all tomorrow. Okay? Okay, bye everybody. Actually, I'm also gonna be doing a Halloween baking stream this weekend, so if you wanna come bake some cookies with us, feel free to drop in.